What's happening, APLers? Here with the week five preview. Sorry, I missed the uh, week four review. Last week uh, was my dad's birthday on Tuesday, so I spent uh, most of the night with him there, so I didn't get a chance to put anything together. And then uh, William and I ended up going to a soccer game on Wednesday, and then it just felt like it was too late in the week. So I missed out on my uh, promised 28.5% uh, season review, but uh, we'll try to do that this week and uh, go, go from there. So I also got about halfway through recording this, and it's... Then it, my internet connection dropped, so I'm starting over again. So I may be running through this quicker than normal because I want to go to bed. But we'll start out with the uh, Sade versus Ryan matchup for the week. Uh, All-time series here, heavily favors today, 21 to 10. So that's uh, pretty convincing there. And uh, look at the matchup. So the matchup here comes down to uh, two games that are key. You get the Bills versus the Texans, or uh, that's just Stroud versus Josh Allen. So that's a fun matchup. Game should be, could be a shootout, so both guys could uh, go crazy, but game script there could swing this matchup. So somebody gets up and doesn't need to pass, and the other person needs to play catch-up, then it's just a huge advantage to uh, one or the other. So not sure which way that would go. The game seems pretty even. And it could be fun. The other big matchup or big game here is the Bengals and Ravens game. So on today's side of the ball, he is Derrick Henry and Justin Tucker and then Logan Wilson on the defensive side of the ball. And Ryan has Zach Moss and Jamar Chase and Kyle Van Noy on the defensive side of the ball. So six players involved in this one, four offensive players, two de defensive players. So big game. And... Uh, could be a high scoring game, could be a fun game. So lots, lots to uh, swing this matchup based on both of those games. So um, we'll run through the uh, today starters here. So you got CJ Stroud, as I mentioned, against the Bills. Bills haven't really been susceptible to the pass so far this year. Um, but just depends on how this how this game goes. And that's the same thing I, I just said. So the, the max they've given up so far is 273 points against Lamar last week. And Lamar didn't really need to pass much because the Ravens beat the piss out of the Bills. Otherwise, they've given up basically nothing. Everything's been under 250 points. With, again, but it's against Kyler, the game that Tua got hurt, against the Dolphins, and then uh, against Trevor Lawrence. So I don't know if that's anything to write home about. But the... Overall, the Houston offense looks like it's rounding into form. Tank Dell's back this week, so Stroud has all of his weapons. I think it really, as I said, about a million times already. Just depends on how that game goes. Derrick Henry against the Bengals. It's just Derrick Henry is continues to be good. Bengals run defense isn't anything to be scared of. Uh, they got ripped by Chuba last week, Ramondre in week one, Pacheco in week two, so definitely susceptible to the run. Really good spot for Henry. On the in the pass catching core here. So he's missing Malik Neighbors, which sucks. Um, he's fun to watch, so it sucks when those guys are are out. But uh, he gets a uh, he's not even Neighbors light. They're not even close to the same player. But Wandale's going to get a lot. I I don't know. He's going to get a lot more targets than normal. Is that possible? He usually gets like a pile of targets, and they're all at the line of scrimmage. So Wandale will be good. He'll have like uh, twelve for. Uh, 67 yards or something like that. He'll, get a, he'll be involved. See if he can break something after the catch to uh, get over 100. Debo was back last week, and he looked good. Uh, good spot here against the Cardinals. Cardinals are not good at defending the pass. And I think it just depends on how that target tree breaks out. So it looks like Kittle's going to play. So that might decrease the Debo ceiling a little bit, but it doesn't look like he's it right now. So Debo's the man. Brian Thomas against the Colts, excellent matchup. He has been extremely good um, this year as the rookie. Colts defense is getting crushed by the pass like, nearly every week. And they're missing like their whole defensive backfield this week. So really good spot there. Uh, Colby Parkinson gets the start at tight end because Laporte is on by. That's not the greatest. Parkinson hasn't been. Super good since week one. He had 98 points in week one, but since then he's went 25, 45, and 70. So 
not anything to be super scared of there, but the waiver wire for tight end is trash too. So, so just hoping we can uh, get by the bye week. Justin Tucker projected for 75. He's averaging like 54 so far this year. Just not, I think he's missed a few, but <clears throat> overall that offense has just been scoring touchdowns. So he hasn't had a lot of opportunity. Let's see if that changes this week. Again, it's in that Bengals Ravens game that uh, is a key one for this matchup. IDPs look solid for, for today. Switch over to the Ryan side of the ball. It's kind of the which Josh Allen are you going to get? He's been in every other every other week kind of guy so far this year. He had 359, then 174, then 410, then 207. So this should be a good Josh Allen week if we're uh, on that trend. Texans defense against the pass has been a little above average but they haven't really played anybody scary. Uh, Anthony Richardson went over 300 points. Everybody else has been under, but it was Caleb Williams, Sam Darnold, and uh, Trevor Lawrence. So Caleb Williams and Trevor Lawrence aren't really intimidating, and Darnold didn't need to pass much in the second half. So again, game script in that one, I think, sways everything. Uh, Aaron Jones has been great. He gets the early morning start against the Jets. Jets run defense is fine but not super scary so really good spot for jones he's just involved all over the place um <clears throat> catching a ton of passes and uh, we seem to be feeding him the ball a lot like with no regard for the fact that he gets hurt a lot so we'll see how long it lasts uh zach moss is in at this number two running back spot for ryan ravens are they, they're the number one team against the run so far they haven't played anybody that is really great though uh, they played the Raiders and the Cowboys, and they're not good at running the ball. Pacheco had 100 in week one. They played Buffalo last week where they did shut down James Cook. So um, Ryan's starting going to Zach Moss over the uh, Jacksonville backs. The Colts are not good at not good at the run. Um, so ETN or Bigsby look good, but it looks like they both are going to be available to play. So maybe it's just both of them and neither of them is, is a play. So Moss against the Ravens is fine. Just maybe not a great spot. Jamar Chase against the Ravens is a great spot. They are, they can, they can be passed on. And Jamar Chase has been uh, really good the last two weeks after a slow start. So over hundred points the last two weeks. So really like that spot there. Uh, Deontay Johnson against the Bears, not the best spot there at all. He's been great since Andy Dalton has come back, or not come back, but since Andy Dalton has taken over for for them. Uh, he's got 150 the first week he was back and 110 the second. So he's been over 100 points. But Bears D is tough, though, so might not be a smash spot. Jake Ferguson has been a smash spot. Missed the week due to injury. And uh, week one was only 33 points, but that was a weird game where Dallas didn't need to pass a lot. But 196-105 the last two weeks. Brandon Cooks is out. He seems to be the safety valve for Dak. And uh, just a, a really good bet to do well. I meant, I missed the two Thursday night guys, so I think Ryan and Sade would both hope that their guys would have done more than that. Bijan gets 80 points as the Falcons go crazy on offense. Probably a pretty disappointing night for Bijan. 80 still solid, but probably not what you're hoping for. And Godwin in the first two weeks seemed like he was going to be the number one <clears throat> for the uh, for the Bucks in the last three weeks. He's been solid, still you know, 79, 75, and then 71 this week. Uh, but I was just hoping for a little more more there. Uh, kicker so for Ryan here, Boswell has been really good and has had a bunch of good games. And we'll see if that continues. And then defense is a little uh, – projected to be a little less than today. He's got uh, Van Ginkle and Van Noy. I'm pretty disappointed that the third defensive guy doesn't have a Van in his name. But Van Ginkle and Van Noy are both big play guys. So Ryan's betting on some sacks or turnovers there to uh, bolster their score. Otherwise, they have a potential for a, for a, low, a low total there. So when you add it all up – might be a little surprising to see that Ryan's favored by uh, 45 points to win. So I'm going to go with Ryan pulls the upset here. <clears throat> and uh, the Bills are behind a little bit more than the Texans. And Josh Allen outduels C.J. Stroud, even though the uh, point totals here aren't showing it.
Next matchup is me versus Daggy. So all time record here is tied up three to three. So we'll run through it. Uh, Dak is the quarterback for this week against the Steelers. Don't love it. Steelers D has been really good against everything, <clears throat> but really good against the pass. <laughs> Less so last week. Uh, Flacco, I think, was was fine. Flacco put up 277, or sorry, 227 once he came into the game. So maybe a little bit of confidence that Dak can throw the ball around, but uh, it's not the best spot. And the weather might be shitty, so that might not, that might not help. So probably should have just started Baker. Just I hate Thursday night football. It sucks, and didn't want my quarterback to play on Thursday. That was pretty much the deciding factor. Um, running back, uh, HN. There's like zero excitement to start him in the current Dolphins offense. So, gets the Patriots. But whatever the game just sounds extremely boring. And the Patriots have been fine against the run. They got crushed by Jordan Mason last week. Brees got on the week before. Charbonnet the week before that. Zach Moss with 83 in week one. So you can run on them if you want to. I just don't think the Dolphins offense can do much. So strongly considering Tyrone Tracy in instead of HN. And, uh, just got to figure that one out. Najee against the Cowboys should be a really good spot. Cowboys get run on by pretty much everybody. However, Najee was supposed to do this last week against the Colts and put 76 points in. Uh, majority of that was just on one reception. <clears throat> but I think I don't really have any other options with uh, Dobbins and Pollard on by. So Najee will be in the lineup and hoping for the best against the, uh, against the Cowboys. Uh, Marvin Harrison has been good. Would like more. Just disappointed in, uh, mostly disappointed in Tyler. Looks like a train wreck back there. He doesn't like have any progression through his receivers at all. It's just like one read and chucks it and that's about it. So, um, still, I think Marv's been pretty, pretty impressive so far. So, just hoping that uh, the Cardinals get behind and have to throw the ball and uh, it should be good for Marv. Drake London has probably the best game of his best game of the year for him on Thursday night. Targeted a ton, and uh, Cousins threw for 500 yards, which he'll probably not, you know, probably won't do again this season. So I'll take the I'll take the 186 from London. It was it was a nice game. It was fun to watch. Uh, Dotavian Wicks is my waiver wire pickup this week, uh, replacing the injured Rishi Rice. So I like the spot. Seems seems decent with uh, <clears throat> Dobbs and Watson out for the week. Um, and the Rams defense is not scary at all against the pass. They're pretty bad. One of the in the bottom third of the league for sure against the pass. They gave up the uh 246 point game to Jamal Jennings. Marv Harrison got him for 174. Jameson Williams got him for 159. So it's probably Jaden Reed that gets that big game, but we'll hope Wicks gets some uh, gets in the mix there too. McBride against the 49ers. It looks like McBride is gonna play. That's what uh, Schefter's uh tweeted out here recently uh 49ers have been like they're like really really tough against uh tight ends but they've played like complete trash tight ends so not too worried about the the matchup from that side of it i'm more worried about kyler murray not knowing how to play quarterback than anything so my uh, kicker should be fine defense is fine i gotta find somebody else for mosley because he sucks and is injured too i just don't have any injured reserve spots to put him on so drop him soon and uh, find somebody else so on the daggy side of the ball Jaden daniels gets a start he's been awesome kyler finds his way to the bench Jaden daniels gets a start he's been 329 293 374 338 brown's defense has been solid against the pass um but Jaden daniels might be matchup proof he's just getting it done on the ground and in the air they have a really high percentage passing offense for him to get the ball out quick short passes and uh, see what the guys can do after the run so he should be should be solid uh Brees against the Vikings I know day he's not excited about this one Brees put up a 20 point game last week he's given a, a lot more work to Braylon Allen than 
I think any Brees Hall owner would want to see Daggy included. And the Vikings run defense has been good. No, one of the best in the league so far. So not a great spot, but it's still Brees Hall. He can go crazy at any point. And he's involved in the passing game. So doesn't seem like the best spot, but it's always a potential there. Uh, Ramondre gets a start with uh, Barkley being on bye this week. The Dolphins run defense is a, is a good matchup. Well, it's a team you want to run against. They get crushed. Just depends on who it's going to be. Is it going to be Antonio Gibson or is it going to be Ramondre? So Ramondre has gotten all the headlines that he's benched because he fumbles all the time. Um, I shouldn't say benched. He's not going to start. I don't know if that really matters. So the Dolphins gave up um, 144 to a split between Bigsby and Etienne in week one, 156 to James Cook, 150 to Zach Charbonnet, and 130 to Tony Pollard. It's a good spot. Just depends on the volume. Mike Evans got off to a really hot start on Thursday night. Looked like it was going to be a huge game. He got two, two touchdowns early and then kind of cooled off in the second half as the uh, Bucks didn't pass too much in the second half. But still 107 is a good score. Uh, DK against the Giants seems DK has just been a monster so far this year. So good spot. Fun player. Seahawks are passing a ton. Looks good. Pickens against the Cowboys. So I, I get to face Pickens instead of a Monroe. The uh, fortunate buy spot here. I think it just depends on Pickens. It's, it's been 81, 31, 62, 110. Cowboys are middle of the road. Just depends if Justin Fields needs to pass the ball or not. It looks like Evan Ingram is a long shot to play, so we get Dalton Schultz uh, at tight end again for Daigie this week. I think it's the, kind of the same as last week. Schultz is definitely lower in the pecking order. He did have 71 last week, which is a nice uptick from his somewhere in the 30s and 40s that he's had. So doesn't exactly scare you, but... See if he can be solid. Aubrey does scare him. That guy can kick it from anywhere, and the Cowboys are willing to kick it from anywhere. The rain, potential rain, may put a little damper on that. No pun intended, but uh, Aubrey is a difference maker, a kicker. So we'll add it all up here, and it is uh, up me favored to win this one. So, so it's... I think I'll sneak out another upset. I think the bye weeks are are haunty here. If you insert Barkley and uh, Amonra in here, this is this is different. I just still just don't feel comfortable having Dak and Najee having to get uh, get it done here against Pickens and Aubrey on Sunday Night Football. Be fun one to watch for us uh, tomorrow night. <clears throat> All right, next matchup is the Super Team versus Greg. So. The all-time series here is Ross leads 20 to 11, so heavily favors the super team. I talked to Greg this week, and he said, you know, when you when you do this, it's fine. You can just, like, skip my team because nothing ever works. So we'll maybe do an abbreviated version for, uh, for Greg here. So the super team totals look good again this week. So Burrow gets the Ravens. Ravens, you can be passed on. Um, Bengals defense is pretty bad, so can definitely see a script here where Burrow is behind and has to pass a ton. So looks good. Jordan Mason against the, against the Cardinals. Another one. Looks really good. Cardinals, bad against everything for the most part. But uh, definitely bad against the run. Third worst in the league. Averaging giving up 191 points a game. Last week they gave up. 136 to Brian Robinson and 115 to Jeremy McNichols. The week before that, they gave up 145 to David Montgomery and 123 to Jameer Gibbs. Uh, yeah, so it's a good spot for Jordan Mason. Uh, Ken Walker came back last week and was a monster at a bunch of touchdowns and uh, had a super cool play where it looked like he was tackled and like, flipped all over and then wasn't tackled. Didn't really score a lot of points, but still looked cool. But Walker against the Giants is a good spot, too. They're kind of middle of the road, but it just seems like the Giants being depleted without Singletary and without neighbors should be a really good spot for uh, for Walker to rush a lot. Nico is a monster. Bill's matchup isn't the best, but not sure it matters. 
Higgins against the Ravens. He he looks good, just not getting like a huge game, but he's capable. And then Olave against the Chiefs. I think that's a, a tougher one. The Chiefs defense is is serious. Um, McDuffie will probably be on Olave and uh, potentially can shut him down. Still gets a lot of volume. Let's see. Brock Bowers against the Broncos. Broncos defense is really good too. Uh, but Vegas has like nobody to catch the ball. I guess it's just Devontae out, but they still have nobody to catch the ball. Bowers blocked a little bit more last week with uh, Mayer out. He's still out this week, so maybe that's his upside a little bit, but uh, seems like a good spot. The young ho gets a buck 49 despite missing two field goals on Thursday. Still a really nice score from kicker. And uh, Ross's ridiculously talented IDPs are predicted to be you know, about the same as everybody else. Uh, on the Greg side of the ball, nothing's going to work, so none of this matters, but we'll run through it quick. Brock Purdy's in a really good spot against the Cardinals. Um, should be great and super effective. James Conner against the 49ers. Um, the run defense is fine. They're in the middle of middle of the pack. Big game big game from Kyron against them. So, you know, it it can happen. Um Jerome Ford against the Commanders, another good spot. Washington's pretty bad at, at defense. Greg has the like the backup dude sitting on the bench with Trey Sermon and Alexander Madison as uh, potential guys to throw in here as well. But uh what's going with Jerome Ford, who hasn't cracked 100 points yet this year, but the commanders are. Uh, pretty bad against the the run. They've had somebody go over 100 against them every week so far this year. So playing a good matchup. Josh Downs should be good with uh, Blacko at quarterback. Just uh, going to be the slot guy similar to Wandale, maybe with a little more upside. But uh, Downs should be good. Rashid Shahid against the Chiefs. Worry a little bit about that matchup too, similar to what they said it with Olave. Just the Chiefs defense seems to be good at taking the top off, but she can get behind people with just one pass. And uh, JSN against the Giants. Um, eh. just don't think there's a ton of volume for the Seahawks pass offense there that uh, that's needed. So Ayuk finds his way to the bench, probably deservedly so. It's been pretty shitty so far this year. Uh, Greg goes with Cade motherfucking Otten on Thursday night. Gets 91 points out of his tight end spot. I think that might be the high for the year. Pretty excited about three for 44 for Kate on. Uh, we got kicker extraordinaire here for uh, for Greg. He's our, uh, our guy back here. And then Jesse Bates puts up a big 55 there on Thursday. So when we add it all up. It uh, looks pretty favorable for, uh, for Ross. Just helping Greg. Let's hope everything works this week. Let's hope that these guys on the super team just shit the bed. We get a big, big kicker game. We get Brock Purdy going nuts. Downs catches like 13 passes. Shahid, Shahid gets uh, gets behind the Chiefs defense a couple times. Let's make it happen, Greg. Let's uh let's get to one and four and uh, knock the super team back to three and two. Oh, didn't put my shit in here very well. All right. So next matchup is Tank versus Corey. Um let's see. All right, that's all here. Tank leads the matchup 14 to 10 all time. And uh we'll get into it here. So so Tank has Gino, the quarterback, against the Giants. Huge week last week for Gino. Had to play from behind the whole game. That probably shouldn't happen this week. They're playing at home against the Giants, who are missing their two best offensive players. This doesn't seem like a spot where Gino's gonna have to go nuts. The pass, the offense is uh running through Gino and uh they're being passed first. So I like to think that that could lead to some opportunity. Just don't know if the huge upside is there for Gino this week. James Cook against the Texans. Fine. Um, Cook had been cooking the first three weeks. Over 100 points with 106, 156, 111. And then shut down by the Ravens last week with 49. The number one rush defense. Texans aren't too far off. They're the number six rush defense, and they did get crushed by Aaron Jones, but uh, held the held the Jaguars guys under 100 points last week. 
they did total 151. Jonathan Taylor was held in check week one. So I think it, it can work for James Cook here to be totally, again, not not like totally against him at all. He's, he'll be fine. Kyron against the Packers, another one that, that should be fine. He's just like their whole offense. So he's going to catch passes. He's going to get a ton of carries. They don't have any other choice right now because – all their pass catchers are hurt, so Kyron's solid. He's just going to score touchdowns a lot, too. CD against the Steelers. Sure, it's fun. It was better last year than he has been so far this year, but started a little slow last year, too. Um, he hasn't gone over 100 yards yet this year, so it's got to happen eventually. Might be next week against the Lions versus this week against the Steelers, but I'll be cheering for CD. Uh, Pittman finds life as Joe Flacco takes over. Uh, he had nothing with Richardson, but uh, it should be a nice spot here for Pittman. Should get fed a lot from Flacco. Jaguar's pass defense is horrific. He's the, one of the hottest DFS plays this week, so really good spot for Pittman. Speaking of hot DFS plays this week, Jaden Reed is another one. So the uh, target tree is reduced. The Packers hasn't really mattered in games of with where that Jordan Love has started so far. Jane Reed's had 215 and 168 in those games. The Rams are not good at defending the pass, as we kind of talked about with uh, Duntavian Wicks. So really good spot for Jane Reed. Kincaid against the Texans seems good. Shakir is out, so somebody has to catch more passes. Why not Kincaid? Uh, he's been good, not great. 70-105. 99 in his last three weeks on four, five, and seven targets. So I like to think that target share is going to be there. Texans have been stellar against tight ends so far this year, only giving up an average of 32 points a week. They played people with terrible tight ends. So not too worried about that. Um, Kicker Moody has been a little moody since week one. Week one was uh, a big one with 256. He came back last week with 104. So just see what happens if uh, 49ers can convert touchdowns or not. Defense looks good. On the Corey side of the ball, um, Mahomes is just concerning with Rice out for the, probably the rest of the year, Hollywood out for the rest of the year. We're back to just Kelsey and uh, super fast if you're worthy. So can they make that work? Saints defense. A little tough. So just don't feel like there's a huge amount of upside for Mahomes. Uh, on the running back side of the ball, lots of upside for Josh Jacobs. Rams, real bad. I mean, defending the run. DeAndre Swift ripped him for 192 last week. Uh, James Conner got him for 145. So the opportunity is definitely there if – the Packers are going to run the ball, and if they're going to feature Josh Jacobs, it's a really nice spot. Amari Cooper, what could have been last week, like an 82-yard touchdown called back on a holding. That didn't really look like holding. We've had one good week from Amari so far this year, but uh, this is a nice spot for the second good week because the commanders pass defenses, trash. DJ Moore, been pretty shitty so far this year. 80 points is the high. Panthers are like middle of the road. Just Bears offense hasn't looked fun like at all. DJ Moore is like pouting by himself on the end of the bench. So maybe this is a PR shitstorm that's working out for Corey. Kittle also looks like he's going to play against the Cardinals. I was a threat to uh to go crazy. I was a threat to catch zero passes, but Against Arizona looks like a, a solid spot. Should be a high-scoring game. Kittle's been good so far this year. 84, 179, 114, so confidence confidence there. Kicker's good. Defense is fine. Uh, we had a big night from Darnell Mooney on Thursday with 154 points, a less big night from Algier with 28. So I think Tank picks up the win here uh, fairly comfortably. We're going to have Mahomes going on Monday Night Football to uh, try to get the win for Corey, but I think he's going to be in too big of a hole and uh, won't be able to sneak out with the win. All right. Let's see if I did my animations right. Nope. Get someone up too. All right. So last matchup here is Jake versus Solomon. So the uh, 
all-time record here is tied 12-12. So run through Jake's matchup here. Lamar against the Bengals seems good. Should be should be a high scoring game and should be a lot of opportunity for Lamar to pass and run, provided they don't just want to run, which is kind of what they've done since week one. Uh, the last two weeks, he's had 15 pass attempts and 18 pass attempts under 200 yards passing. He's still getting there because he's running the ball a ton and they're scoring. So he's getting a lot of touchdowns. Could still be the case this week. Uh, Jake is searching for a second running back, and it looks like he found that in Kareem Hunt. Uh, after Carson Steele fumbled last week, Kareem Hunt came in and took over pretty much the whole backfield there in Kansas City. And that seems to be a really good, really good spot. They're going to run a lot, and uh, Kareem Hunt looked fine. So should be good. 81 points against the Saints. Maybe feels a little bit low. Uh, Kamara has been he's – he's like the number one running back so far. He gets the ball like nonstop all the time. Chiefs really good against the run. So just still think the volume that he is getting – doesn't make the matchup too scary. So really good spot here. Uh, Keon Coleman is a starter for Jake at, uh, at wide receiver. You're trying to jump in here with Devontae Hurts, Keenan Allen probably. Yeah, Keenan Allen probably needs to come off IR. He played last week. Um, but he's not, not feeling great about him either. So Keon Coleman made a couple nice catches. He just hasn't done too much so far this year, but Shakir's out, so maybe in a game where there should be a lot of scoring. Uh, Tyreek against the Patriots, like hilarious last week to watch Tyler Huntley throw back shoulder when Tyreek had like three yards on the guy. It was like a touchdown, but if thought uh, Tua was in there. So maybe they can figure something out. Maybe they can manufacture some touches to Tyreek to open up this offense. So just don't feel comfortable or don't, don't feel optimistic that any of that stuff is going to happen. Christian Kirk against the Colts is a good spot. Um, Kenny Moore's out. So that's the guy that uh, Kirk would be matched up against and Kenny Moore's good. So nice spot there. Uh, it looks like Njoku is going to play. So Jake may have a choice there to, uh, to make if he wants to put Njoku in uh, in week one. Otherwise, you get Friar Muth against Dallas. Friar Muth was, after I said he was just kind of a, you're hoping for four catches for 30 or 40 yards. He goes 5 for 57 in a touchdown last week. So feeling a little bit of confidence there that maybe he does more than that. Njoku just has more upside. Uh, Seibert has been really good kicking the ball. For Washington, so he fills in the roster here, and then Jake gets a really good game out of Levante David on Thursday night. The Solomon side of the ball, Jordan Love, can he do the same as he did last week? Will he be behind so he has to throw the ball all game? Anyway, the games that he's played, he's been really good. So, Rams matchup, good matchup. They don't know how to defend the pass, so I feel like it's a really good spot for Jordan Love. Uh, Chuba has been excellent since Andy Dalton took over. The Bears is a tougher matchup, but still feel like he's going to be involved in all facets of the game. So should be a good should be a good spot. Uh, Salmon has Devin Singletary in right now. It doesn't seem like Devin Singletary is going to play, so I'll fill in somebody else there off of uh, Salmon's bench, and assuming we'll get around ninety points from uh, from that uh, wide receiver looks pretty good. You get Diggs. Against the Bills, gets the uh, revenge game uh, storyline here. He's been he's been solid. He's catching a lot of passes over hundred over over hundred hundred points last week. One eighteen the week before. <laughs> Bills pass defense is tough, but uh, I just think this game has a lot of opportunity. And then you get the two guys going against each other with uh, JJ and Garrett Wilson. Don't feel super great about JJ. He's going to get. A lot of, probably Sauce Gardner is going to follow him around quite a bit. Not a ton of upside there, and Garrett Wilson has just kind of been poor so far this year. I mean, 66 points is as, is as high. That's what he had in week one and two. And then 58 in week three and 36 in week four. Um, our past defense is 
been pretty shaky. So maybe this is an opportunity for Garrett Wilson to uh, to break out. Definitely been a lot of talk in the media and on Twitter and stuff that just Garrett Wilson doesn't have it this year with with Rodgers and he's still just really talented. So you think it's going to happen? Kelsey seems uh, reborn last week with Rasheed Rice going out. Kelsey was the featured man. So will that be the same against the Saints who are susceptible to the uh, to the tight end? Seems like a good bet. Butker has been good. Defense is fine. We've got a couple of D-backs in there that have been doing some things. Two Packers against the Rams is a good Solomon staple. So um, not putting my animations in here correctly. Really ruined the surprise that I uh, heard this, this spoiler alert that it's the first time since I've been doing this that enter all this stuff in and it comes out as a tie. So I just lean Solomon. I think Kelsey makes enough plays on Monday Night Football to uh, to get it done. We have another good another good matchup here on on Monday Night. We'll have Kareem Hunt and <clears throat> and Kamara 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 going for uh, for Jake, and then on the Solomon side, we'll have Kelsey and Bucker going. So let's go with I think Kelsey making enough plays down the stretch, and we get a Bucker field goal late to uh, to push Solomon into the lead. That's the rundown. We'll take a quick look at uh, what all what I just said. So you get Ryan over today. Maybe a surprise upset win there. It's a 45-point margin. Me over Daggy, 119-point margin. Seems like way too much. Uh, super team over Greg comfortably. Tank over Corey. And then Solomon over Jake by a point. So, uh, I missed my smashes and, uh, and passes of the week, but uh, I'll hope that that returns in week six. So that's what I got. Thank you,